In the UK, our home is our castle. Home is where the heart is. And that's where we come in. Heart is with this one. Wow, wow, wow. Those are words we like. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're back with a sparkling new series. <laughs> if you want a house, ring Phil and Kirsty. This know. isn't a flat white, I'll flatten you. <laughs> Trying to find home sweet home for house hunters all expecting property wizardry. With my laser vision. Great house hunter. <laughs> Great house hunter, I forgot that bit. This flat is a miracle. But even a miracle isn't always enough. You're going to kill me. I probably need persuading. Yikes. Oh, I understand this isn't going well. So it's up to us to sprinkle our magic. Ta-da! And find them the perfect pad. Because after all... There's no place like home. Smashed out of the park. She has. I like it. Come on. <laughs> we better get to work, then. The nation needs their homes. This week, we're in glorious Cambridgeshire, where years of house hunting may be starting to take their toll on everyone. What have you done with your thumb? I think I'm more traditional. There's an off art. It seems to be affecting our senses. Don't want you to think that I'm losing my touch. And our tolerance. It is your job to advise. Quite something, isn't it? I'm not convinced. I don't know what the point of this is. One house, the windows are too small, and the next <laughs> house is too big, and it's potentially too cold. It's double glazed. But hopefully it hasn't damaged our judgement. Wow. It is very cool. Buy now, buy anything, doesn't matter, just buy it. This week we're house hunting in and around Cambridgeshire, taking an educated approach to a high-flying market. I'm mentoring a couple who keep missing the mark. And I'm tutoring a pair of first-time buyers. A wash with history and architectural splendour. Cambridge is a university town with a high-flying reputation. But don't be fooled by the picturesque backdrops and the beautiful facades. It's Don Eat Don out there. House prices here have risen more than any other British town or city over the last seven years. And average house prices are now 13 times the city's average salary and there's no sign of let-up. With a growing army of commuters wading into the market, gleeful at the 50-minute direct train link to the capital, this property scrum is now spilling out into the charming towns and villages of wider Cambridgeshire. When it comes to house buying, this place is no punter's paradise. Our first set of house hunters are two busy doctors, impatient to start their life together. But there's a problem. They live nearly three hours apart. While Michelle works at Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge and studies for a PhD, Philip spends his days as a radiologist in Oxford. Lovely seeing you. Their property search has barely got a pulse. Being in Oxford and looking for property in Cambridge has been actually really difficult. You have to move pretty quickly, which is difficult when you're working and you have someone else in a different city that needs to see the property. And it's not just the distance. Their hunt for a first home together has got other complications. Doctors move around a lot, so whatever property they buy may at very short notice have to be rented out, making location critical. Plus, in a market where speed is everything, they're struggling with a slight cultural difference. I'm originally from Germany, and what we do in Germany is we rent for quite a while, and then maybe when you start thinking about settling down permanently, then you buy one, one property. In Germany, we're not used to, to buying until we're actually quite old. But at this rate, they're going to be quite old before they get settled. Well, Phil, the fact that small family homes are on average twice as expensive here as in Germany is a bitter pill to swallow. Their 350 grand budget would be a huge amount elsewhere in the UK, but in the areas they want to live in this city, it barely gets them a starter home. Meanwhile, all they want to do is live together. Living in the same city and in the same property will be the key start to our lives together. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it now. Long-distance relationships are tough, so I'm desperate to help them. Next time someone asks if there's a doctor in the house, I want the answer to be yes, two of them. The Cambridge market is racing so hard that I just feel like sitting down and saying to you, buy now, buy anything, doesn't matter, <laughs> just buy it. But obviously that isn't the intelligent way. So you tell me what you want and I'll see if we can find it. For me, the key thing is something sensible within a half an hour commute of Addenbrooke's. Probably you have a, at least two bedrooms. We're both working as doctors and we're probably just going to be here for three more years. Ideally, we want to be here longer. So what you need is a property that 
will sell, rent or stretch. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, sounds good. We have to make very good use of this time. Mm. Mm. You're both here during the day, during the week in Cambridge. This is a golden opportunity and we can't fritter it away. With their £350,000, my old-fashioned pair of first-time buyers want a house with at least two double bedrooms and some outside space. It should rent well, just in case their circumstances change and they don't mind a bit of cosmetic updating. As for location, preferably on the south side of the city. But no more than a 30-minute cycle ride to Adam Brooks Hospital for Michelle's work. Our other set of house hunters are Chris and Louise Bushby. Chris is a school's partnership instructor and Louise works in HR for an international company. They've played the property game well and with the proceeds of their house sale and some help from a mortgage are now ready to buy their dream home in the Cambridgeshire countryside for around 800 grand. But despite their best efforts, they've been met with a string of disappointments. So we've tried to buy three houses so far. I think we've just been very unfortunate with the way that they've either fallen through or we've not actually managed to land those ones. It feels like somebody else is controlling our destiny. And nobody likes that. And usually, they're renting back their old house near Kettering from its new owners, meaning they're exactly where they started. Only now they're paying rent. We want to move on with our lives. We're ready. Simple as that. You know, for six months now, where we thought we were moving, um, we now just, we're stuck. Chris and Louise have been searching for the last 18 months and have had a bit of bad luck, but they are pinning their life savings on this long-term dream home, so understandably quite particular. Their impressive new property must be within three miles of a station with direct trains to the capital. Selfishly, my number one criteria is making my journey shorter than it currently is. We can get back relatively late at night, then getting back in the car for another 20, 25 minutes. That, for me, is, that feels like a waste of time. Louise is not alone. Cambridgeshire is stiff with people looking for a better work-life balance, which means a budget of £800,000 won't guarantee them success because housing stock is so low here. There's no room for complacency. It's the 15, 20 year so, yeah. house. This, this yeah. is the one. This is the property that we want to live in now. Which is why we don't want to get it wrong. You feeling daunted, Phil? Want a swap? Don't be silly. You know I perform best under pressure. It strikes me, on the face of it, you're in an excellent position. You've sold your house, you've got mm -hmm. money in the bank. Mm -hmm. yep. You're in clover, as far as that's concerned. And everyone keeps saying you're in a prime position, you'll be top of the list, and we don't seem to be. I wonder why not. Everything's there ready Everything's to go. Everything's there, we could move You've been story. upsetting the estate agent. <laughs> well, not that I'm aware of. We just don't seem able to buy a house. Well, that's my job here, is yeah. to put you top of the list. Just talk to me more about the kind of specifics of the house, things that you like, things that you don't like. I would like a very big wow kitchen. So I, we spend a lot of time in our kitchen. It's a very sociable house and yeah. we'd like a really nice sized garden. Right. We're fully aware that the areas we're looking are <coughs> house prices are rising. You're right, there's not a lot out there. The market is fierce yeah. and there's, there's slim pickings in your price bracket. It's tough out there. Yeah. yeah. But it's going to get remarkably easy now, I feel. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. A masterclass in expectation management from Mr Spencer. Glad you were taking notes, Kirstels. Chris and Louise have got a budget of £800,000 and want a statement property with plenty of entertaining space and preferably four bedrooms. It must have a large garden for Chris and for Louise be no more than three miles to a railway station. This means we'll be looking west of Cambridge, as far north as Huntington and south as St Neots, focusing on the towns and villages with direct train links to London and easy access to the A1 for Chris. Good morning, Phil Good Spencer. Morning. I like the mode of transport. You're getting in with the Cambridge thing, aren't you? Well, the thing is, I have it in London, but yeah. I thought I brought it down and I right. did, yeah. How yeah. are you getting on? Two doctors. Yeah. Very matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And he's German, so he's quite shocked, obviously, by what you can get in the UK for the money. Yeah. I'm feeling positive because they've got an intelligent, analytical approach to it, quite medical. Well, my couple need a bit of a reality check. They have asked for a semi-rural house that's very close to a train station. Oh, OK. That's a bit tr tricky. It's the commute that's going to be the problem. OK. But I think they're going to be picky. OK. What have you done with your thumb? Oh, um, a mandolin, you know, one of those vegetable choppers? Yeah. Was making potato oh. dough for took a huge... It's really painful. 
so I'm quite sharp and beaty. Hmm, so in other words, it's business as usual. <laughs> With so many exacting requirements to juggle on Chris and Louise's countryside search, it'll be easy to get lost in the detail. My job is to gauge the importance of location versus commute versus house to see what the priority is for them. And that's exactly what I'm doing with our first property. We're kicking off in rural Ruxton, just on the Cambridgeshire Bedfordshire border. That's the footpath, right. which goes down to Roxton Lakes. Okay. So for dog walking and that kind of thing. It is six miles rather than the ideal three to the railway station and a drive rather than a walk to the village. But if they can get over that, then the property more than makes up for it. What do you make of the house? Yeah, it's quite, quite different, actually. Yeah. Not a normal, typical square box. It's a big house inside. Yeah, it looks it. Looks, looks big. Yeah. From here, you'd be 15 minutes into St Neart's train station. OK, yep, sounds but good. Come on in. Well, I seem to have passed the location test, and the house bit should be a breeze. Built just nine years ago, this spacious and stylish property should give them plenty of scope for entertaining, with a huge kitchen breakfast room and four good-sized reception rooms plus a lovely secluded garden. There are five double bedrooms and four bathrooms, so arguably more than they need for just the two of them. But the price is very competitive at £695,000, a whopping hundred and five grand below their budget. That's very nice. I like it. I like it. It's very high spec. There's underfloor heating, right. all this lovely surface. That's very nice. Yes, nice size, very good size. Yeah. And that outlook is enticing. Come and see it. Oh, nice size garden. Which includes a double garage and some stabling here. Oh, wow. And, Chris, you're after being able to grow your own veggies and that kind of thing? There's, there's plenty of space here for us to do that, certainly, yeah. The garden makes this very special, I would say. 18 months search, one Spencer special, and it could be all over. Well, let's hope the supersized upstairs doesn't prick your supersized ego, Phil. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good size. Yeah. What on earth are you going to do with all these bedrooms? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a good question. In order to get you the living space that you're after, you're going to end up with a big house exactly. and lots of bedrooms. You can run a guest house. <laughs> Why don't you have wander yep. through the other bedrooms? If you've got any questions, give me a shout. Questions like how much should they charge and should they put a kettle in the room, perhaps? It's light and airy, isn't it? It is. Good. All seems to be going rather too well in my first property. I'm waiting for this big butt that's bound to come at some point. If I were you, I'd just cross my fingers and keep smiling, Phil. I'm not normally this easily pleased. Well, let's try and pick holes in it. <laughs> yeah, yes, bathrooms. Uh, we don't need anything this big. How about the geography of it? We just need to check the driving distance to St Neots Railway. Yeah. Bit more research. Yeah. Yep. But we're in a good place after yep. property one. Property good place, one. Good yep. Start. Good start. But I do seem to be guilty of supplying too much space. Whether in the end they'll be happy spending the money on that remains to be seen. It's never been exactly easy to get a foothold on the property ladder. But in a rising market where properties are snapped up in a matter of days, there's no time to hang around. So what are we doing here, Phil? Hanging around. <laughs> Come on, let's go. The first house I showed Chris and Louise in the Cambridgeshire countryside went down better than expected. I'm not normally this easily pleased. <laughs> Having said that, it did have too many bedrooms and bathrooms. But luckily, even in a tricky market, I've got three more fantastic options to show them. As for our doctors with a distance between them, Michelle and Philip, we're on the hunt for a property that will unite them in Cambridge. But with average house prices at £348,000, nearly twice the national figure, it's not an easy place to be a first-time buyer. They're looking for a two- to three-bed house with a maximum budget of £350,000. But what would this size of property cost them elsewhere in the UK? In affluent Tring in Hertfordshire, they'd be looking at around £514,000 for the same space. Whereas over the border in Glasgow, they'd be paying less than half their budget for a three-bed property. Similarly, Nottingham offers great value for money. This time, £161,000 for the same square footage. Certainly a lot cheaper than Cambridge. For Michelle and Philip's first property, we've come three miles east of the city to the picturesque and popular village of Fenditton, right next to the River Cam. 
We're not opposed to rural. No, it feels really nice. It doesn't feel like you're in Cambridge. With only a 20-minute cycle ride to Addenbrooke's Hospital for Michelle, this place gives them the best of both worlds. Here we are, semi-detached, three bed. Probably at the top of the house attractiveness in yeah. terms of plot. Good first impression, I have to Good admit. first impression. Yep, Fantastic. Definitely. That's what we like to hear. Let's get in. Straight to the point. Clinical, just what I expected. This house is a semi and built in the 1990s. It's got a spacious living room leading into a separate dining room and decent-sized kitchen. Upstairs, two double bedrooms, box room and a bathroom. Currently rented out, so might need a bit of cosmetic attention, and the garden is more than adequate for a bit of sunbathing. It's being marketed at £340,000, 10 grand under their budget, and it fits the bill as a rental house too, in case they have to move elsewhere. What you've got here is a very conventional layout. First impressions? I like the fact it's relatively modern. It's actually yeah. quite nice. It's, it's easy to work yeah, with. It's a blank yeah. canvas. Yeah. This is a very good example of a house which can be quickly, easily and cheaply Done freshened up, yeah. up. It feels a little bit crammed. It might be the lighting today. I would say I don't think there's any need for the nets. You've got a perfectly yeah. good hedge out here. Unless mm. you intend dancing naked around a sitting room, which mm. I've got no objection to anyone doing. Well, that's good to know. That doesn't apply to you, Phil. Close on at all times, please. There's a good cupboard there. Mm -hmm. And this wall would be really easy to take down. Yeah. It would really be a lovely big kitchen leading onto the garden. Nicely sized garden. It's a nicely sized garden, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to see the nicely sized garden? Yes, please. Yeah. Am I imagining it, or did you just speak German, Kirsty? Nine. Right. Now, this is a generous garden. I think it would be the right size, it's not too much work. Yeah. The house is absolutely fine. I could very happily live here. Philip? Most of the hospitals I'm going to work at are actually on the other side of town. The A14 is notoriously bad. So are we saying this house is losing points for location? I think, yeah. Well, hopefully it can get those points back upstairs. Nice little window, so it's not too dark. Mm, it's nice and light up here. To a certain extent, this is a house hunt with one hand tied behind my back. Oh, and a dodgy thumb because we don't actually know where Phil is going to be working. We actually need to be thinking about the roads and the traffic. So, a bit of, bit of regrouping there. If their jobs took them elsewhere, they could rent this place out for around a grand a month, and the fact that it's got two bathrooms would only make it easier. OK, and I assume this is the master bedroom. Two nice-sized bedrooms, say, one we could rent out for a while. The extra shower in the bedroom, I don't know what the point of this is. Honestly, any future tenants will thank you for it. It's a great house, but I fear that Philip's so far hypothetical commute may be the fly in the ointment. But do you think the location has struck it off? I think it hasn't completely struck no. it off. Overall, no, I think it is actually a quite nice property. Mm. OK, yeah. good. I must be more careful with that term, struck off. It makes doctors very nervous. Back with Chris and Louise, and although they liked the first house, giving them the living space they wanted brought with it more bedrooms than they needed. But I think with my next property, I can improve on that, as well as their commute. They haven't specified this location, so it is a bit of a gamble. Now, you're probably wondering, why on earth are we here? <laughs> We've come 24 miles east of their preferred patch, to the village of Stuntney, near Ely. To get them all the things they want, I think it's a risk worth taking. This house that I'm going to show you is the closest to a train station of any house that I could find. Yeah. We're about four minutes into Ely. Okay. It's not my preferred location. It's a long commute for you. It's a long commute for me as yeah. well. Mm. So I ease, ease the drive to the station on the one hand, but I, <coughs> yes. I, I make, the, make your life a bit harder. But definitely. Well, the property better be good then. It <laughs> But I think it is, in fact, I think it's stunning. A converted school packed full of character. Not only does it have an amazing double-height sitting room, but also an impressive kitchen opening out onto a landscaped garden. Too many bedrooms was an issue at the last place. This has four, but two on the ground floor and two upstairs, which gives them much more flexibility in terms of usage. There's a guide price of £750,000, 50 grand under their budget, and they wouldn't need to do a thing. It's a dream house in every respect. Different. It does feel still like a school. 
ever dreamt of living in? No. I'm, and I'm not convinced it's for me either. Not soaring to the top of the class, are you, Phil? It's, very, it's similar to when you see people who convert churches. It's that kind of feel for me. Well, for most people, that would be a good thing. But at least for the couple who like entertaining, the kitchen must surely get full marks. Hmm. I, I think it's impressive. You've just got to have a long think about could you live in it, would you live in it. It just doesn't flow for us. Yeah. And I think the location side of things would put this house out of the equation. Yeah. Go for it. After you. That's a lesson learned, isn't it, Phil? Don't want you to think that I'm losing my touch. <laughs> this always was a gamble. Losing your touch? Perish the thought. Back in Cambridge with Michelle and Philip and the other Phils tagging along for our second property. To be honest, after the way things just went at the last place, I'll be glad of the break. There'll be no slacking here, Phil. Having taken on their concerns about location, we've come to the sought-after village of Trumpington, the right side of the city for Philip and just a six-minute cycle to Adam Brooks for Michelle. Certainly pretty peaceful. Well, it's certainly pretty popular. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Phil's right, properties here don't hang around for long, so we're lucky that there's even one house to show them within their £350,000 budget. So, architecturally, not so hot. No. But what you lose in beauty, Game. you gain in square footage. What are your little thoughts standing here? Mm. OK, that's us up. <laughs> <laughs> I think Philip's really struggling with what you get for your money around here. Monsieur doesn't even, or her, <laughs> doesn't even want to go inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... I think I'll give it a try. Okie dokie. <laughs> Very kind of him. I know it is a bit aesthetically challenging, but this 1960s house could really give them all they require. Upstairs are two double bedrooms and a good-sized single. Downstairs, a big living dining room, modern kitchen and a well-kept garden. It needs updating, but taking on work is how they will get the extra space in this area. But it is top of budget at £350,000. It's very spacious. It's I like very it, yeah. spacious. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, like, with these big windows, I'm a little bit worried about heating. One house, the windows are too small and it's too dark. The next <laughs> house, the windows are too big and it's potentially too cold. It's double glazed. It's double glazed. In Germany, it's triple, quadruple... Yeah. I know. It's yeah. cheaper, it's better, it's <laughs> no, bigger it in Germany. It, isn't it is better. absolutely the case. I know that that's the case. <laughs> yes, but for the price, it doesn't get much bigger or better in Cambridge. And it would rent out like a treat if they needed it to. I think Philip could do with a reality check. The market's gone up by 21% around here in the okay. last 12 months. Yeah. So you, you need to get on with it. I think it's still coming from... from slightly a different background where, where I previously lived. I think yeah. it's still hard for me to put so much money in something. I'm still feeling a little bit uneasy about it, I have to admit. Uh, the two of you want to live together. Yes. <laughs> you actually that's want amazing. to be under the same roof as soon as that's possible. Very, that's very true. Um, does Philip sweat the small stuff in terms of the houses? I don't want to look as if I'm dismissing his fears. I think he'd be honest if he didn't like he the house. Okay, yeah, that, I think okay. he, he doesn't shy away from honesty. Did you walk in and think, wow, fantastic big space that we could do loads with? Yes. Right, so you're saying mm. this might be the one for you? Yeah, potentially. Wow, a refreshingly intelligent way to shop for houses. I wish I could say the same for Phil. It's an excellent house. Really so did good. you tell him that? Yeah, well, it's up to him. No. Oh, God. I had a pound for every time you say that. It's yes, their decision. I know it's their decision, but it is your job to advise and people yes. are expecting you to advise. Don't hang back from that. It's a brilliant house. And I just prefer the drip feed method over the double dose, Kirsty. OK, so this is the master. It's quite nice, isn't it? Needs mm. the, the superficial decor sort of done up. But just... we could live here very happily and very comfortably. Mm. And that would be very nice for a few years. If we... Start a family, we definitely have enough space, <laughs> enough space to, 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 to yeah. deal with that. I like this pair. They've correctly diagnosed that this particular 50-year-old needs a facelift rather than major surgery. Apart from the dubious aesthetic nature of 60s properties, mm. can't complain mm. in terms of area, um, size... You just have to get to terms with the outside. <laughs> I think that, luckily, you've got some time for that because it has so many viewings set up, we can't really do anything. Mm. I think the answer is just to sit tight. 
Well, that would make one gamble each. Let's hope yours pays off better than mine, Kirsty. Buying your first home can be daunting, but shrinking violets need not apply. Swift and decisive is the order of the day. And admittedly, while my couple have a bigger budget, competition for a home with the perfect work-life balance here in the commuter belt is fierce. I might need a bit of luck behind me. I'm helping Michelle and Philip, who are currently frustrated by living in separate cities. After initially reacting badly to the 1960s house in Trumpington... OK, that's just enough. <laughs> ..they now appreciate its inner beauty. As for my search with Chris and Louise, it's clear that location is one thing I need to nail. So, for my third property, we're playing it safe. We've come to Needingworth, a 20-minute jaunt to Huntingdon Station for Louise and an easy drive to the A1 for Chris. I have a rather a passion for this house because it is a proper house for entertaining. Do you remember The Good Life? Was uh, it Margot? Margot. Yeah. 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 Margot in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a real, it's a real party house, and I think okay. you could really celebrate its 1970s eccentricities and really go for it. <laughs> Kirsty's got her platforms. I've got my flares. Let's hope Louise and Chris have got theirs. What this house gives them is space where they want it. There's a huge kitchen with a contemporary rustic feel, three reception rooms, and a fantastic half an acre of garden overlooking farmland. There might be five bedrooms, but the emphasis is definitely downstairs social areas. Massive amount of space. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Leading right through the dining room. It is 50 grand over budget at £850,000, but there's a bit of flexibility in the price, and we've managed to find them a house that's not on the open market. Another living space, dining space up the end, and a great big kitchen. It's a lovely um, kitchen. And it's conservatory, proper built conservatory. They've done it very well. That brings a lot of light in, doesn't it? Mm. This house is not on the market as yet. You are the first people to see it. Brilliant. You're always first with Phil. Oh, well, I did, I did say to you, <laughs> you I didn't did, have many talents, but you getting did. in front of the queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you've, um, you've done it. There's no doubt about it. Once this place goes live, it'll be inundated with viewings. And the last thing we want is for Chris and Louise to miss the boat like they have for the last 18 months. We need to make hay while the sun shines. But you've always wanted one of those, haven't you? You've got every <laughs> excuse. That's why I wanted to bring you It's a boy's toy. <laughs> um, quite a good wow. patch of lawn. It's lovely. Mature trees. Yes. A couple of stables, greenhouse, veg patch. Just what I'd adore. I'm not sure Louise will ever see Chris if they moved in here. Indeed, it's all very good, but the house is not without its niggles. All fixable, though. This is your master wow. bedroom. So you've got that lovely balcony. Mm. Glass of wine before bed. Yep. All of this here is unnecessary. And then, weirdly, you've got another door, which you don't need. It's madness. So this could all be in your bathroom. This is literally yes, completely that space. wasted space. It's great that Louise isn't daunted by a bit of room rejigging. As for the rest of the house, yes, it could do with a bit of updating, but it's immaculate so they could take their time and, when money allowed, make the decor fit their style. What I really, really like is it's so open in the flow because you can go from one room to another room really easily. This is all sounding rather positive, so I don't want to put a spanner in the works. I genuinely think that the, your only problem here is, is, is getting, price? getting it... Price? is getting it for mm. the money. I'm just pleased to have found something that they're, that they're positive about it on, on all levels, area, garden, commute. And you've done brilliantly, and I will tell you that a hundred times, and I will go on telling you Can you keep saying it? I will more. say, what, you've, done really, you've done really well. This is an amazing house. Thank you. Well done, Phil. Can I go Can, now? One more time. Two was a massive effort. Don't push your luck, Phil. Look at the house that could be yours. All you need is a man cave at the bottom of there and we'll be fine. This is I is know a there's a cave. shed. There's, there's a, a wonderful shed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a special house. Having said that, I've got another house to show you, which oh, I'm rather okay. pleased about. And the next house is one of the best I've seen in years. 800,000 might get you a lovely five-bed house in Cambridgeshire. But how would this budget fare elsewhere? In Pricey Pool, you'd be looking at over double the money for the same space at 1.8 million. 
whereas in Manchester, a five-bedder would cost an average of £438,000. But Tyne & Weir offers better value, giving you the same space for just over three hundred and thirty grand. One thing we've learned on this job, every town has a different market. Back in Cambridge with Philip and Michelle, and although the Trumpington house came up trumps, the exterior was an issue for them. So, for my next property, we're fast-forwarding two decades to the 1980s. Close to Mill Road, one of the coolest places to be in the city, it's an area our young docks know well. I really like the location. It's um, Michelle can get to work very quickly. Nice, nice bars in the cinema. I'm not going to say what happens to bars and cinemas at a later stage in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Given the speed at which houses sell here, it's my turn to be big-headed, as we're the first to see this house. It's a probate sale and won't be hitting the market for another couple of days. It obviously needs updating throughout and isn't as big as the Trumpington house, but it does have a decent sitting room and kitchen diner. The garage has been converted into a downstairs bedroom with ensuite, and there are a further two bedrooms upstairs. The garden is secluded and a good size. It's a fixer-upper. It's a fixer-upper, <laughs> yes. It'll come on at £325,000, so 25 grand under budget. But work costs do need to be factored in. Does it feel exciting? Yes. I'm not put off by the fact it needs something done. It's this wallpaper here. Yeah. Oh, oh wood chip. Philip, do you not have wood chip in Germany? <laughs> no. It is a rite of passage to spend at least one weekend with a large industrial steamer, which you rent. Mm -hmm. And for the first half hour, it's so satisfying and a lot of fun. I think By I could the enjoy end it. of the weekend, you want <laughs> to die. Sounds like a weekend with the in-laws. Not mine, obviously. This would rent for around £1,300 a month, mm. around the same as the house in Trumpington. Mm. It definitely looks like a space you can do something with it. Certainly. Costs for a new kitchen, boiler and decoration would set these two back around 15 grand, and they might want to spend a few quid on that staircase too. So it's a small double. This is a double. It is considerably smaller than the previous house. It's the more short term purchase, in my opinion. It seems to be way more work than the place we've seen in Trumpington. Yeah. Mm. But it's potentially a better area. Mm. But actually, probably not a better area to live in, a better area to rent in. The vital signs are looking good. It's just a case of these two doctors going through a routine examination of the pros and cons of each property. We're a little bit torn between which of the two properties is the better investment. It would be nice if we were going to put an offer in on a property to actually have a chat, like a second viewing in some senses yeah. as well, just to yes. keep Yeah, yeah well, we can yeah. do that. Do you want to go yeah. back? Yeah. I like this methodical approach. Methodical is good, yes, but you know me, Kirsty, I'll never pass the opportunity to stir up a bit of passion. And that's what I'm hoping we'll see at the final property I've lined up for Chris and Louise. We're in the picturesque town of St Neots, an area they love, just over five minutes drive to the train station for Louise, close to the A1 for Chris, amenities on the doorstep, and that's even before we talk about how fabulous the house is. I thought I'd throw something a bit different into the mix here. First thoughts of this? Intriguing. Two very different buildings, yes. which looks quite exciting. Indeed, it is. This is a modern extension joined onto a 19th century barn, and it's absolutely amazing. It was converted two years ago to create a series of beautiful rooms, including a magnificent double height open plan living space and high spec kitchen. An additional wing offers four luxurious bedrooms all of good size. There are two fabulously indulgent bathrooms and even a family room comes snug. It comes as no surprise that it's 50 grand over their budget at 850,000 pounds. But we do have it on good faith that the vendors are open to offers. That's a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more than just a kitchen. It is very cool. Is it the kind of space that you could see yourself living? Yes, I, I, I personally could. I probably need persuading, mm. yeah. Ooh, that's a surprise. OK. And by the look on Louise's face, I'd prepare yourself for a charm offensive, Chris. So there's nothing I don't like about this house, <laughs> but I'm guessing it might not be quite your taste. I think I've still got to get used to it. 
I think I'm more traditional. It's because it's an old fart. <laughs> Have a wonder. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> not quite the kind of charm offensive I had in mind. <laughs> yes. Absolutely fascinating. Because now Chris is very much on the back foot and Louise is trying to sell him the house. Maybe she could have your job, Phil. They're all really, really good sizes, aren't they? You're itching to get in the garden, aren't you? I do want to see the garden. Yeah. <laughs> if I had to pick a weak point with this place, it would be the garden. So this could be Chris's moment to fight his corner. I feel a very civilised showdown coming on. It's tight, from my opinion. If I could just bring our thoughts back to the need to be close to transport versus space. This is as good as you'll get, I would imagine. It, the combination yes. is pretty strong here. Yes. Pub at the end of the road. I keep coming back to your, the first property. That's my problem, I think. But there is no amenities. I've probably got a favourite and you've got a clear favourite. <laughs> I thought number one was my favourite till I came here. Oh dear, this could all fall apart if they can't agree between this place and the new build in rural Roxton. And it was all looking so promising. Back in the city, Michelle and Philip are also torn between two properties. The 80s do are up near Cool Mill Road on 325 grand and the spacious 60s house in sought after Trumpington, top of budget at 350,000, which we've come back to see. See, I look at it and I think, oh, you clever little TARDIS. Therefore, the perfect home for a doctor or two. This house feels stronger. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's always going to be a good house to rent. Take out the stair lift, do a bit of work on the bathroom, yeah. you're fine. Come three years' time, when you discover where you're going to be living, that's the moment you decide to knock down this wall and enlarge your kitchen. The other house, all you can do is do it up. This house, you can add value by making it more extraordinary. Very true. Sorry, I'm still not quite clear. Which house do you like, Kirsty? Easily the best house we've seen inside, isn't it? Yeah. And way better on, on second viewing. I actually start liking it, I have to admit. Yeah. yeah. It's a grower. This is a really well-built, fantastic family house. And I think people are getting more and more sensible about 60s houses. And they're seeing that space is what matters. It's definitely at the upper range of what we mm. wanted to spend. We would need to get it for the 350. Yeah. Otherwise, I think it would be too high for, for us. This is the place they want as their first home together, and it's a good decision. But there is another offer on the table and more viewings booked in. Scalpels at the ready, it's going to be a delicate operation. In Cambridge, Michelle and Philip want to make an offer on the 1960s house in Trumpington. Problem is, it's at their absolute maximum budget of £350,000. With at least three other viewings booked, it's essential we avoid a bidding war. As for Louise and Chris, they're poles apart in terms of which property to go for. Louise loves the unique contemporary barn conversion in St Neots, on at £850,000. Whereas Chris thinks the more traditional new build in rural Roxton, priced at £695,000, would suit them down to the ground. With the barn fresh in their minds, we've come back to Roxton to thrash it out. As I understand it, this would take you an extra commuting time of 20 minutes each way. At the asking prices, there's 150 grand's worth of difference. The other part of that is the kind of... You'd have to get in your car to do everything if you lived here. The barn, yeah. you could potentially walk places. Mm -hmm. you know, there's some things on your doorstep that you don't get here. It's a really difficult one. Yes. It doesn't sound too difficult for Louise. Yes, but remember, Chris was very excited about the size of the garden. That's a very similar size garden to the barn, isn't it, in terms of distance back to the house? Yeah. It's just enclosed. Yes. This is a really fascinating scenario. Louise is kind of almost allowing Chris to have this viewing in the hope that he'll write it off and they'll buy the more expensive option. I think that's what's happening. Check out Dr Phil, the anthropologist at large. So this is nice. It is. It needs some personalising. The view is lovely. Yes. It feels like there's too many bedrooms for us. Yeah. Phil, I think you've found them both the right house. Pity it's not the same one. I love this house. I'd have no problems living here. What about the view? That way. It's just that. I, I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> Point out the negatives. <laughs> I understand why. That's, That's OK. Brilliant. 
It feels like we've got lots more discussions to have, so why don't we head to the pub? Sounds like a great plan. Excellent. All best problems are resolved in the pub. Absolutely. You're so right, Phil. That's why I'm taking Michelle and Philip to what could very soon be their local boozer. Can you envisage yourselves in that Trumpington house? Yeah, I think we can. I think quite easily, yeah. yeah. So I think we're pretty happy with that as a plan. Having agreed on the house, the next step is usually what do they want to offer. But today the plan is slightly different. Someone is going to see it this evening. Mm -hmm. Now, I do not want an offer, a reasonable offer, on the table when someone goes to see that house this evening. What would you recommend? I think we hold off. Negotiating is such that it's all about the psychology. As soon as an offer exists, everybody knows about it and it sets that level. I went into a shop today in Cambridge and I saw a pair of shoes and I said, do you have those in my size? And the lady said, oh, they're in the changing room, they're being tried on at the moment. Immediately I wanted them more. <laughs> that is exactly the same with house hunting. Michelle, you're happy to take my advice? Yeah, I'm Philip. very happy. I think I'm, yeah, I'm happy too. It sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. Perfect. As for Chris and Louise, there's been a lot of discussion, but I think we may be reaching a breakthrough. Do I sense that you're coming towards the barn? Yes. Very determined. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Well, I, I yeah. suppose I knew Louise was always a, a fan of the barn, um, and Chris, you needed just a bit of time. Yeah. Well, it's on the market at 850,000. I'll be being too cheeky going in at under 800. That was what was in my mind. Let's try them as low as 785. See what happens. They can only say no. That's the worst that can happen. Let's go for it. Right, let's get to it. Let's see where we go. Deep breath. Um, Sue, hello, it's Phil Spencer. Hello there. I am actually sat here um, with Chris and Louise and we've had long, long discussions <laughs> about <laughs> the whys and wherefores. I've got an offer for you. Uh, and it is for 785,000. It, it is made with a 50% cash deposit. Mortgage is all pre-arranged. OK. Thanks, Sue. I'll wait to hear. Bye. Unfortunately, 785,000 pounds is rejected. So we go in with our top offer of 800,000. It's our last chance to bring this 18-month search to an end. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, Sue. What news? Yes. I bet they have had a long, long chat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sue, delighted to say we have a deal. Many, many thanks. Good news all round. Thanks for your help. Bye bye. Thank you very much. 800,000. Cheers. Thank you very much. Well done. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's fun. Thank Brilliant. you. Congratulations. Bottoms up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I deserve that drink. As for Michelle and Philip, we let the other viewings happen, and over the following six days, there was much toing and froing. Our final offer was £350,000. But unfortunately, an investor has come in and bid two grand more. Michelle, it's Kirsty. Can you hear me? Kirsty's ringing with the vendor's decision. They have decided to go with you and accept your offer of 350. I know. It's. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh. Luckily, the vendor was nice enough to want to sell it to someone who's buying it as a home rather than investment. Thank you, Mr. Awesome. Okay, Thank you Thanks, really Michelle. Really okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. They have taken a very sensible, steady approach to buying a house and they found the right one. It's brilliant. Two months on, Philip and Michelle are excitedly waiting to exchange on their new Trumpington home. I think it's obviously the start of a new chapter in our lives. And we're both really looking forward to, to, to moving in into our finally mm -hmm. joined place to live. And we haven't lived together before and we're very happy. The busy doctors are desperate to swap their stethoscopes for wallpaper strippers. One thing we plan to do is to renovate the bathroom. I think we can do step by step over the next few years and make it a really nice place. 
but until they're actually through the door, they're able to enjoy some brief respite. It's been nice to get back to relatively normal life, not having to be totally preoccupied by house buying. They could uninstall all the apps from letting agents and property search to actually now focus more on, on yeah, going travelling and doing stuff together. Yeah, it's nice. Happy days. When are we going travelling? <laughs> you two have a house to do up. Over with Chris and Louise, really excitingly, they completed early on their stunning new barn conversion. Champagne? Getting the keys was just a fantastic moment. After the last couple of years that we'd had, uh, to finally get the place that we wanted. This is the lifetime home now. We spent some time wandering around, not really believing it was ours. Oh, blimey. It looks quite big without furniture. <laughs> we can now make it ours, personalise it, and just enjoy it, really. Louise may have had to persuade Chris to make this place theirs, but he has no regrets. We're over the moon. Phil did a good job. It's now reality. Our reality. It is good. It is. And <laughs> I can't stop okay. smiling. I know. <laughs> Cheers. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together?